tried to convince me then and there to take something in the medical field. I am a working adult. I know some of you are going to find that very hard to believe because apparently I sound like a small kid but let me clarify some stuff. Born in 1996, I'm 22 years old, will be turning 23 this November. I studied graphic design for three and a half years and have been working as a graphic designer for two and a half years. I know two and a half years is very short for me to be making a video about my experience but comparing the me back then to where I am now, I think it's worth sharing with y'all because if you were to go back in time and tell 7 year old me, 12 year old me or even 15 year old me that I I'd be working as a graphic designer. None of the me's would actually believe you because I was never an artsy kid who liked drawing or anything like that. I was told that I was very creative growing up but I was never particularly into artsy stuff. I actually never had a dream job to begin with. Well, there was a time when I wanted to become a part-time writer because I love to read. For as long as I can remember, birthday presents, Christmas presents would always be books. But like I said, part-time writer because the main focus was whatever my parents wanted me to become. That and I suck at writing. Ever since I was young, my main goal was was to make my parents happy. I liked being praised by them for being the quiet kid, the disciplined one. Praise me more please. They wanted me to study hard, do well in school, to get a good job. Nothing wrong with that. Now in my country, the academic stream is divided into two. Science stream and art stream. Science stream are the pure science classes focusing on subjects like chemistry, biology, physics, while art stream is focused on accounting, economy, visual arts. So when you're 15, there's this exam that you sit for and the results will determine which stream you'll be going into. By the way, I'm from the PMR era. I know that they changed it to PT3 now. The problem is that there is this negative stigma surrounding the art stream. If you do well for this exam, naturally you'd go to the science stream. The science stream is seen as the smart kids class, while the art stream is seen as a place where all the weak students are thrown into. But actually in my day, there were straight A students who decided to go into the art stream. Of course, everyone was like, Nani, a straight A kid chose the art stream? I'm telling you, the discrimination that art stream students face is very real. So when I was 15, I did quite well for my exam, just got a B for my national language. All A's and one measly B. Not that I'm salty. As expected, I chose the science stream. Decision making was very easy. Do I have any interest in pure science? No. Does my dream job have anything to do with the science field? No. Are Yuri and Victor just friends? No. So should I go into the science stream? Yes. Yep, I went into the science stream without a clue on what I was going to do in the future. But how did graphic design and I cross paths? <clears throat> Through fan fictions. Yes, fan fictions. I know y'all are like, I thought this was supposed to be a serious story. It is. I got into graphic design because of fan fictions. Not just any fan fiction. K-pop fan fictions. I became a fan of K-pop when I was 13 in 2009 but only got into reading K-pop fan fictions at the age of 16. I kinda grew out of everything when I was 18. You would too when everyone in your favorite band starts leaving to start their own family. Eli and Dong Ho are dads now. They have children. Let that sink in. So, fan fictions. I used to religiously read them. From straight, cute, fluffy stories to the smuttiest ones out there. The website that I used was asianfanfics.com. Reading it on a daily basis, I just had the desire to write my own fanfic. I'm sure you've all had that phase, even with manga. You know, that sudden urge to create, to be that Bakuman duo. I write the story, you do the drawing. I mean, and I attempted that. It lasted a week. As I was looking into how to start my first fanfic, I noticed that these writers would always have a poster accompanying their stories. Digging in further, I came across this thing called graphic shops. These shops offered to design a poster for fanfic writers and they were done by other K-pop fans. All you had to do was fill up a request form and wait for them to contact you. One of the graphic shops that I was looking at had a tutorial and I watched it. I was so surprised, amazed, that it was even possible for a normal human being to create posters that looked so real and official just by tweaking things here and there. That's when I decided instead of requesting for someone to design a poster for me, I'll make my own. One. So I binge watched tutorial after tutorial. At that time, I didn't have access to Photoshop, so instead I downloaded a free program called GIMP 2.0 and I started. I wrote my fanfic and designed a poster for it myself. But it didn't end there. I'd write even more fanfics and every time I sat down to write a new story, I designed my own poster. So writing and designing became a new hobby. Whenever I was done studying and doing my homework, I'd be busy with my fanfiction stuff. Months passed and I began to realize that... Uh, 
I kinda enjoyed this. That's when the thought came to me. I'd love to do this as a job. I went to my parents and expressed my desire to become a graphic designer. Of course, I had to do a lot of research on graphic design as a profession before going to my parents. They weren't very okay with it. They worked silently. My mom especially. By dropping bombs like, you know, graphic designers don't really get paid much. You know, the demand for nurses is really high these days. She wanted me to become a nurse, but I stood my ground. I was serious this time. When I was 17, I decided to join the graphic team of the school magazine editorial board. Unfortunately, that didn't last long because the ad board meetings and my librarian prefect duty days clashed, so I had to quit after a few months. November 2013 came, and it was exam time. Even though I decided to pursue graphic design, I didn't abandon my science subjects completely. Since I started something, it was fair of me to finish it properly. Once I was done with my exams, I worked at a Thai-themed steamboat restaurant while waiting for my results. During that period, I decided to try some online stuff. I found this website that sold stuff and would pay the designers commission for their designs, so I decided to give it a shot. I submitted the first design and it was approved. I remember feeling so happy like, this is it! This is the graphic design life! Then I submitted my second design. <sighs> And that was my first brush with criticism. The second one was rejected and returned for edits. I can't find that email but this is what I can recall. Hi Josh, there are a lot of things to change in your design. The font you used doesn't fit the theme, please change it. The bubbles are very distracting, do remove them. There is a punctuation error in the title. Trust me, the list was long. And I remember just sitting there and thinking. Are they trying to make a fool out of me? Yeah, I was very immature. My ego was hurt pretty bad, so I decided to abandon this. Then came the exam results day. Now getting good results turned out to be a good and bad thing. Good thing because who wouldn't be happy to see the results of their hard work, right? Bad because it became an excuse for people to discourage me. On the same day that I got my results, my parents drove me to their choice of college. The lady registering me there took one look at my results slip and said, you know you can become a doctor, right, with these results? And it triggered my parents. They tried to convince me then and there to take something in the medical field. Why couldn't this lady keep her mouth shut? Here I am about to start a new chapter of my life. Was I scared? Very. But I knew that this was what I wanted to do. Later on, relatives heard about me taking this course. My mom would tell me about these remarks, hoping that I might change my mind. But I was past the phase of trying to please them. Then came orientation day. There was a segment where all the students of the same course gathered and introduced themselves. From that introduction, I found out that most of my classmates were from the art stream. Well, some were from the science stream, but they were those gifted people when it came to drawing. They had some sort of artsy background. I was the only one who didn't have an art-related background. That's why I had to take a special art test before submitting my portfolio to be able to take this course. I also felt shy to say that the reason I decided to study graphic design was because of K-pop fan fictions. From that orientation day itself, I began to feel insecure. I felt like I had a lot of catching up to do. I didn't want to be left behind. And to top it off, the first few semesters covered a lot of basic subjects like drawing studies, the element of design, color theory, you know, the basics that my classmates, especially the art stream kids, were used to because they had this kind of art projects in school. I did manage to win my lecturer's hearts by being on time, full attendance, being active in class, and submitting assignments that were decent. My lecturers liked them and I got mostly A's for my subjects. In fact, altogether, I got 31 A's and 3 B's when graduating later on. But no matter how many A's I got, or how much my lecturers and classmates complimented me, the minute I set eyes on another classmate's work, all that confidence shattered. They were those students who'd skip class, do last minute work, mess up their presentation, some might not even show up. But I had to admit that their work was amazing. Even though I was the top student in class, I always knew deep down that I had a lot to work on. I felt like my accomplishments were mostly due to the fact that I submitted my assignments on time, I attended every single class, and I was very extra when it came to my assignments. But being extra was very costly. Was the cost expensive? Yes. And the amount of money that I spent on materials and printing alone was crazy. I gotta thank my mom's boss for letting her print my A3 colored assignments for free at the office. I was very lucky because my parents parents paid for everything. We weren't rich people, but when it came to education, no matter how tough things were, they'd figure something out. That's why I had to make sure that I got my A's. Other than the not-so-motivated students, I did have my own rivals who were on the same wavelength as me. Then there were students who tried bribing me to do their assignments. One guy even brought Jesus into the picture. If Jesus can help, 
so can you. And look what happened to him. As for criticism, I got used to it because of the consultation sessions with my lecturers. It was a time to pitch ideas for assignments, show them progress and get feedback before finalizing things. But my consultation sessions were mostly me explaining Doctor Who to my lecturers. I included Doctor Who in most of my assignments, but like I've said before, it's not very famous in my country. That's why my 3D animation lecturer once suggested that since my time vortex was blue, why don't I make the TARDIS orange? Yes! Orange. That session turned out to be very educational for him, but it was crucial for the lecturers to understand the idea before judging on presentation day. Speaking of presentation day, we'd usually have other lecturers judging us. Sometimes we'd have lecturers from other universities coming over. They were brutal. Fast forward towards the end of 2016. Did I feel like I had a grasp of things? Yes. Was I still insecure? Yep. During this time, one of my lecturers recommended me to work part-time at his friend's graphic studio. In this studio, there were different types of designers that specialized in different things. Tasks like logo design, business card, booklet, packaging, brochure, had their own group of designers. I was placed under the person in charge of flat vector illustrations, the only spot available. I didn't know much about it, so I was given intensive training by my head. He taught me how to create these flat vectors and even how to utilize ready-made ones to put together a design. I learned a lot from him. It was an amazing working experience for a student like me. The only downside of this job was that those in charge of flat vectors were also in charge of the motion graphics projects. I knew the basics of motion graphics because I had a subject dedicated to it, but we just touched the surface and I generally suck at videos. Ironic considering this is a video, but honestly videos are really not my forte. I was scared to do something that I knew I wasn't good at. It was very pressuring, even more because I was getting paid so I couldn't take things lightly. I worked there for a few months and when it was time for my final project in college, I decided to quit to focus on my final project. I got an A plus for it. Of course, that A plus came with a lot of criticism. So my final task was the internship. I thought my college would handle everything like find me a place and just chuck me there. But no, it was like hunting for a real job. I had to update my portfolio, search for vacancies, send in my resume together with my portfolio. I got a few calls to come for an interview and this was the first time I was very conscious of my childlike appearance because I was afraid that they'll look at me and immediately think, I don't want a small kid designing for me. But in order to graduate, I needed this internship thing to work. I went for my interviews and my portfolio helped tremendously. So I was an in-house graphic designer at the place that I interned at. Unlike the graphic studio where designers worked in a team and had various clients, an in-house graphic designer handles everything from logo design, updating the website banners, preparing the newsletter, designing material for events. Literally everything the company needed that was design related, I was in charge of it. So it helped me become independent and deal directly with the high ups. I should add that I was a paid intern. My boss was very pleased with my performance. He even requested me to become a full-time designer over there once my internship contract was over. But remember, I was having my stomach problems and needed to go for treatment and stuff. But this experience boosted my confidence. Once my internship was over, I had to talk about the company and present the stuff that I did to my classmates and lecturers. And at this point, I was able to say that I felt confident about being a graphic designer. And then the time came for my graduation. So I went to collect my graduation robe one day before. I approached the counter and the lady asked for my name. Okay. Hey, give me a minute. Oh, it looks like you're a recipient for special award. Uh, what special award? You've been chosen as best student for graphic design. So you'll need to go on stage twice. You don't understand. I couldn't believe my ears. I don't even know how to explain what I felt at that point. There are no words. What about my rivals? They were on the same level as me and their work was much better than mine. Why weren't they chosen? Was this for real? I went home and told my family about this. They weren't surprised actually. Even my classmates and friends said that they saw it coming. But I'm telling you, no one, and I mean no one, truly knew how insecure I felt throughout those three and a half years. And you know that art background that I wished I had? I realized that I finally had it. And I've been working as a graphic designer since then. Currently, I'm an in-house graphic designer, but it's not a bed of roses, you know? Yes, it's amazing to do something you love for a living, but I still have my challenges like last minute instructions. I can be as organized as I want to be, but if the other side is unclear or late with instructions, it affects the design process. You have to be prepared for, oh, we need it now stuff. But it's frustrating when the other departments dilly-dally conveying instructions
productions for big events or some sort of mega sale that needs time to be designed properly. That's one of the cons of working as an in-house designer. You are surrounded by a lot of people not from the design or arts field, so they don't really get the design process. Crappy references. For designers, you know those moments when you're asked to design exactly like an existing design? Like, you see this ugly, horrendous menu that I'm holding? I want you to make my menu look exactly like this. This kills the designer in me. It's like I have the TARDIS. Forget the world, I can show you the universe. I can take you across the galaxies to see the singing towers of Derillium, the rings of Akaten. But instead of asking for any of that, you just request me to take you to your backyard. That's what it feels like. I can give them their money's worth. But sometimes these people are only paying for my ability in using the programs. That's all. Language. So in my country, if you want to get a good job, you have to be able to speak in English and the national language Malay. And out of all the languages that I can speak, English is the easiest for me since I come from an environment where everyone, family, friends, teachers, lecturers, neighbors speak English. So when it comes to designing, while most of the projects are in English, there are some ventures that are completely in Malay, targeting our Malay speaking audience. And I'm just not very confident since I don't use Malay often. In the beginning, I used to make a lot of noob mistakes. Like one time I had to design some promotion with a code for the newsletter. It completely slipped my mind that there was a Malay spelling for code. While the pronunciation is the same in English and Malay, the spelling in Malay is K-O-D. I submitted the design with C-O-D-E. No one else noticed until the newsletter was sent out. I did take full responsibility but it was embarrassing, you know. So while it's easy for me to spot errors like this in English, I have to pay extra attention to the designs that I make in Malay. Time management. At the workplace everything is go 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 especially if there's an online store to update nowadays everything is digital back in college i used to hate the whole planning procedure so on my first day at work i only managed to put together one design and i felt crappy but with time i was able to plan and set aside tasks that are less important and focus on the major ones excitement why is this a bad thing well it just makes me feel guilty to this day i still get excited whenever i see my designs being printed out to be used in events and all i remember my first official print design i went to the desk and said can i take one copy she saw that i was excited so she said yeah sure but when i went home i was so worried that something was going to happen to this copy that the next day i went to the office i was the first one there so I thought, I'll just take five more. But then what if something happened to these? And now I have this. Is it wrong? I mean, we designers must keep a record of our work, right? But I don't want this excitement to die down. I want to feel this way even after 10, 20 years. So... All because of K-pop fan fictions. And you know what? It feels weird to look back at old me. Current me is very confident with my design abilities, which is why looking at the old me that used to panic over every single assignment is a little cringy. Because I used to freak out over the smallest little thing. Wish I could tell myself to calm down. People go to college to learn. You're not expected to know everything before going to college. This is your learning period. To any aspiring graphic designers out there, it's okay to not know something. Just work hard and learn. Don't go to college just to skip classes and waste your money or your parents' money. You're paying, okay? Remember that.